welcome back. Today we are discussing chapter one, lesson five, uh, solving equations with variables on both sides. So the objective for today is to solve equations in one variable that contain variable terms on both sides of the equation. All right, that's what we're doing. So now, uh, before we had variables on one side of the equation, now we're gonna have variables on both sides of the equation. So uh, keys for success are to use inverse operations to get the variables on the same side. So we're gonna wanna get those variables on the same side of the equation. That's gonna be one of the first things we're gonna do. And we're gonna use inverse operations in order to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with example one. So example one, solving equations with variables on both sides. All right, so we are going to solve each equation and then we're gonna check our answer. So let's start with this first one. We have um, 7K and 4K. So 7K equals 4K plus 15. And there we have it. There's um, our equation. The equal sign splits the equation into two different sides, and we have variables on both sides of the equation. So what we like to do is we need to get the variables on the same um, side, and we're gonna go ahead and do that first. I always like to move the smaller out of the two, like, okay, what's bigger, 7K or 4K? And 4K is actually smaller, so I would move that one. But it just so happens that K is the only thing on this side of the equation. So even though 7K is bigger, if there's only one variable on this side of the equation, go ahead and move your variables over here, even if this one's smaller, okay? And there's multiple ways to do this, um, but for the most part, let's try to uh, use, that as a general, use that as a general rule. If there's just one variable, like 7K is the only thing, um, you move them over there. Otherwise, we're gonna move the uh, variable that is smaller. So here we go, inverse operations, 4K, is it positive or negative? 4K is positive, there's nothing there, so that, that means it's positive. So the inverse operation would be, do, be to do a negative, K, negative 4K to both sides. What happens is we have 7K minus 4K is 3K is equal to 4K minus 4K, that's zero, so that's gone on this side, and then we have 15, that just comes down. Trying to get k by itself, uh, three, this is three times k, so we're gonna do the inverse operation of multiplication, which would be division. We're gonna divide both sides by three, and we end up with k equals 15 divided by three is five. So k equals five, that's our answer. But we need to check our answers. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and check. So I'm going to write the word check, and then we're gonna write that original equation, just how it is, seven k equals 4K plus 15. And then we're going to substitute five in for K in both places. So we have seven times five, and those parentheses, remember that means the same thing as times, four times five plus 15. So we're just substituting that five in for K because K is the same thing as five. Now, at this point, what we do is order of operations, okay? We're not going, sometimes students wanna move stuff um, side to side in the check. We don't do that. We don't move stuff side to side in the check. You just work your way down. So this part, you solve this part, this side of the equation, and you only look at that, and then when you're over here, you're only looking at this side of the equation. And hopefully, at the end of the day, they both equal the same number. Therefore, your answer is the solution to the original equation. But if they equal different numbers, then you know that something went wrong, either in the check or in your problem. So I'm just going to solve this side. I'm going to simplify this side of the equation. And I'm just going to work myself down. So 7 times 5, that's 35, equals, I got multiplication and addition over here. So I have to do the multiplication first. 4 times 5 is 20 plus 15, and then this is already simplified. I can't get that any simple, simpler, so I'm just gonna leave it there. And then 20 plus 15 is um, 35. So this is a true statement, which means our solution, k equals five, is the solution to the original equation. All right, perfect, let's go on to the next one. We have five x minus two equals three x plus four. Okay, the equal side splits the equation into two sides. 
And then here's our variable, one on this side of the equation and one on the other. Now, this one doesn't, it, it, it's more complicated because we don't just have this variable or already isolated over on this side, okay? So in this instance, since there's, you know, a lot of stuff going on on both sides, what we're going to do is we're going to get the variables on the side first, but we're going to move the smaller. So out of 5x and 3x, uh, 3x is smaller than 5x, so we're going to go ahead and use the inverse operation. Um, 3x, there's nothing here, which means that 3x is positive, so we're going to do the inverse operation, which would be a negative 3x to both sides. Then we have 5x minus 3x, which is 2x minus 2 equals 3x minus 3x is 0, and then we just bring down that 4. Now we just have a two-step equation like we did last section. So we're trying to get that x by itself. We have to get rid of this bit on the outside. We're going to do the inverse operation of a negative 2, which would be a positive 2 to both sides. Uh, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. We drop down with the 2x equals 4 plus 2 is 6. All right, then we're trying to get x by itself. We're going to do inverse operations. 2 times x, um, that's multiplication. So the inverse operation of multiplication is to divide by both sides. Uh, divide both sides by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times x is just x. So now we have isolated x's by itself, which is what we want. Uh, 6 divided by 2 is 3. There's our answer right there. So we're going to go ahead and check it. We're going to go ahead and write that original equation. Okay, just how it is there. And then we're going to substitute that 3 in for the x here and here. 5 times 3, we just rewrite this, minus 2 equals 3 times 3 plus 4. And like I said, we're just going to work each side of these kind of independently. So here on this side, I'm just going to simplify that by using the order of operations. There's multiplication and then there's subtraction. And then over here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to simplify this. There's multiplication and addition. So I'm never going to move anything from side to side. I just keep this on its side and work down. And then I do the same thing over here and work down, and hopefully at the end of the day, they both equal the same thing. If they don't, that's okay. It's just there's an error somewhere, either in the check or in the um, solving. So we need to go back and look over our work and try to find out what that error is. So we're solving here. Let's do order of operations. So multiplication and subtraction, the first thing would be to multiply. So we're going to go 5 times 3, which is 15 minus 2 equals. Now we're going to go over here, multiplication, addition, order of operations states that we have to do the multiplication first. So 3 times 3 is 9 plus 4, right? And then we do the subtraction. 15 take away 2 is 13 equals 9 plus 4 is 13. So it is a true statement, which means our solution, x equals 3, is the solution to the original equation. All right, so on to C and D. C is kind of a review from last time, and um, I want you to work on D, but I want you to do it on your own. So here's my friend, the pause dragon. He's here to say hello and uh, remind you that you need to pause your device. Go ahead and work out C and D, and remember to do the checks. Do the checks. And then um, when you get done, press play, and we will go over the solution. Make sure you listen to it thoroughly. All right, see you in a bit. All right, we're back. Let's see how you did on C. So we're solving for this variable. This is a two-stepper. It's a two-step equation. So let's go for it. The first thing we have to do is get rid of this bit right here. 4B plus 2 equals 36. Got to get rid of that plus 2. So inverse operation, we just subtract 2 for the both sides. That cancels. We're left with 4B. That's a B. 36 minus 2 is uh, 34. Okay, then we want to get b by itself. This is 4 times b. Inverse operation of multiplication is division, so we're going to divide by 4 to both sides. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1 times b is b. Now b is by itself. That's exactly what we want. And then we have 44, 34 divided by 4. It uh, doesn't go in evenly, so we're going to have to simplify. What number goes into both? 2. 2 goes into 4. 2 times 2 goes into 34 goes into 30, 15 times, and into 4, 2 times, so 15 plus 2 would be 17, so it goes in 17 times. So that's our answer, 17 over 2. We're just going to leave it like that, 17 over 2. That's how you want to leave your answer. If you don't have your answer like that and you've converted to a fraction, leave your answer like this. No, 
converted it to a decimal is what I meant to say. Get rid of that and leave your answer like this. Okay, let's go ahead and check it. So write that original equation first. And then we're going to substitute 17 over 2 in for b. So 4 times 17 over 2 plus 2 equals 36. Does it equal? I don't know. We're going to figure it out. So here, uh, we're going to simplify this side of the equation by doing this little multiplication fraction uh, problem. So remember, whenever you're multiplying fractions, you gotta look to cross cancel first and then multiply across. So here we go. Is there a common factor between one and 17? Well, whenever you see a one, you know you're good. So four and two, yes, two. Two goes into two one time, two goes into four two times, then we multiply across. Two times 17, oh, what's here? I'm gonna go up here, 17 times two, what is that? 2 times 7 is 14, right? 4 carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. 34. Okay, so 2 times 17 is 34, plus 2 equals 36. Does it equal? I'm not sure. 34 plus 2 is 36, so indeed 36 is equal to 36, and that is a true statement, which means B equals 17 over 2 is the solution to the original equation. Woohoo! If you got that right, yokarankimashita, you did a great job. All right, on to D. Let's see here. Okay, 7n minus 2 equals 5n plus 6. So we're trying to get this. Uh, those are our two variables. They're on different sides of the equation. No sweat. We're going to move the smaller one. So this 5y, we're going to do the inverse operation. It's positive. So we're going to do subtract 5n to both sides. 7n minus 5n is 2n minus 2 equals 5n minus 5n. That's 0, 6. Now we're just getting um, n by itself, so we're going to add 2 to both sides. That cancels. We're left with 2n equals 8. And then we're going to use the inverse operation of multiplication, which is division, to both sides. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times n is n equals 8 divided by 2 is 4. So there's our answer, n equals 4. Let's go ahead and check it and see if it's right. We're going to write the word check. Guess what we're going to write? Yes, write that original equation do it, do it now. Okay, there we go. So now we're gonna substitute the four there and there. So seven times four minus two equals five times four plus six. Now we're just simplifying order of operations this side of the equation, we do the multiplication first. Seven times four is 28 minus two equals five times four is 20 plus six. 28 minus 2 is 26. 20 plus 6 is 26. It's a true statement. We found the solution. So if you got that one right, we found the solution to the original equation. If you got that right, woohoo, good job. And we will see you next time with example 2 very shortly. All right, see you in a bit.